Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and droids across our beloved empire, to today's video, where you are going to witness Lord Vader and Darth Vader lead absolutely decimate the heroic Sith raid. Yes, indeed. It's looking like one of Lord Vader's highlights is because it takes him so long to ramp up mastery and those unresistible damage over time. They are absolutely amazing the Sith raid, and it's looking like they're able to solo the heroic Sith raid if that's something you still care about. Heroic Sith Raid is soon going to be a simple raid in the near future here. However, I think this lineup is going to be something we can replicate inside of the Challenge or Rancor Raid. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to show at least one good thing Lord Vader can do. Because I haven't been a fan of this Galactic Legend. But more so, it's Darth Vader doing all of the work. But before we talk about strategy, the mods, and how these two are really good inside the Sith Raid. And I think this is going to be the best, easiest sith raid team to use to get top tier scores we gotta talk about our sponsor larry geary citizens of Alderaan, are you tired of playing mobile games that just take your money give you no communication and give you no content to play well then let me tell you about our planetary sponsor raid shadow legends you guys know there are a ton of champions in raid with over 600 and i thought we'd talk about one of the bosses the guardian of the void keep malik havar he was a priest of the light at one point but he had an epiphany while stargazing one night light wasn't much of anything without darkness maybe he was right but maybe not however his fellow priest didn't care for it and they kicked him to the curb lucky for us he went off to master the magic of the void so we have a nice supply of void potions to ascend our champions not so lucky for us he's a little ticked off and won't give you the potions that easily without a fight you gotta watch out for malik's poison debuffs which can't be blocked or resisted so you'll need shield buffs and healing to counteract the damage or find a cleanser to clean off those debuffs this month of september raid has just released a huge new doom tower update with two new bosses to take on and more importantly new artifact sets to win i have another great champion that you can get for free if you scan my qr code or go to the links down below in the video description and if you're a new player you'll be getting an epic hero chonaru 200 silver one xp booster one energy refill and one ancient shard all this treasure will be waiting for you right up here but you gotta be quick because these rewards are only available for the next 30 days oh all right, let's go and roll the footage. First thing I want to kind of put out there is this is more a proof of concept that this team is amazing inside of the Sith Raid. We're into a little problem because I thought I'd try out Lord Vader lead first in the Sith Raid. And after about two minutes, I was like, eh, I'm not too crazy about it. So I thought I could back out and switch the Darth Vader lead. However, someone in my guild beside the preload damage after only two minutes of the sith raid being open so yes technically we are not doing a full 100 percent sith raid solo but i think you guys can agree just by watching the footage yes we missed out on a little bit of phase one because of that preloaded damage but this team is going to be a top tier team for the sith raid because all those unresistible damage over times from lord vader that can't be resisted even bypasses the tenacity check on the raid bosses over time you're getting 60 70 80 damage over time stacking and that is simply free real estate for darth vader's calling blade now we're still rolling the first part where we tried lord vader lead and nothing was really happening i'm not really crazy about lord vader especially his lead here my new empire because especially those damage over times drop so this is my first run going with it and I'm like huh we should maybe play around the damage over time because they were just simply expiring way too quickly when lord vader's leading so henceforth we bring in Darth Vader into the lead, and wow, straight out the get-go, no messing around with mods. Some of the Sith Raid solos I've done and you've seen require very specific strategy, very specific turn order. This was literally just smash the damage over times on him and keep throwing Culling Blade over and over and over again. And I've read a lot of Sith Raid solos. This was by far the easiest one I've ever done because it's so straightforward, especially the strategy really just comes down to Lord Vader feeding him as many turns as possible so he can go ahead and with his unique ability twisted prophecy every time he's taking a turn he's inflicting two damage over time effects for two turns which can't be resisted and you don't even need the tenacity down to get these damage over times to apply furthermore you besides him just taking turns you want him to smash as many unshackled emotions on them because when he does unshackled emotions he's gonna apply four 
damage over type effects for two turns, which can't be resisted. And there's only one more element to the strategy, really, in terms of its general application. And that is Darth Vader lead, which is far superior for raid purposes, as we're seeing right here. Inspiring through fear. Way back when in the Rancor raid, when it first came out, Darth Vader lead was incredibly important. Well, now with Lord Vader, it's even more so important. I can't wait to try this out inside the challenge rank where but the most important thing uh, is with inspiring through fear if you got that zeta damage over time effects are always repeating themselves when they technically should expire meaning they'll never go away even when lord vader calls it away or the times have expired the damage over time sticks so you're gonna see crazy amounts of damage over times pile up and it gets even crazier especially when you get the phase three and phase four we're literally like two manning it's just lord vader and darth vader tag teaming lord vader gets the damage over time supply and lord vader just chucking away the sith traveler one by one by one and that is really it that is the overarching strategy here it's not like supreme or kylo where you got to make sure you're doing as many siphons as possible it's not like uh the, the we've seen master kenobi souls those are a little bit more finicky you got to make sure you're ramping up the master really quickly that is really it's really the coaling blade and the damage over time pushing as much work as possible but let's talk about the more underlying mechanics going on or not at the end i'll tell you what i would have done differently again i was going into this blindly and saying all right let's just go ahead and give this a shot and it worked very easily however there are some things i would do differently if you guys want to run this later make it even easier but really even with me kind of trying to figure it out as we go along it was incredibly easy to make it happen lord vader's ultimate was also kind of important one thing i want to point out this is actually what i like about him unlike for example supreme leader kylo ren or for example master kenobi when you get high ground of master kenobi it expires when you get into the next phase supreme leader kyle the, the stacks of siphon reset when he goes into the next phase one thing amazing about lord vader and it's hard to see if it's intentional i think it's intentional the stacks of underestimated continue throughout each phase so he gets up to a maximum stacks of 60 stacks of underestimated and that's important because with every stack of underestimated he is supercharging the mastery of the entire team for example with unshackled emotions for each stack of underestimated he's dealing extra damage and all dark side allies gain one percent mastery stacking until the end of the encounter so when you're using unshackled emotions which is responsible for those four damage over times that make dark Vader's job a lot easier you are constantly increasing the mastery of the entire team which really at the end of the day makes darth vader's calling blade hit even harder on those sith triumvirate members there but even more importantly so i'll give lord vader this i have not been a huge fan of him especially if you've seen my videos and streams not great initial impressions until maul comes around but the dark harbinger that is really important because since those stacks are underestimated do not go away throughout each phase after you get to those 60 stacks of underestimated for the first time he is able to really start hitting ultimates really fast for the rest of the phases you just got to work up the 60 stacks and it's going to be there for the rest of the raid and when you use his dark harbinger he is able to get tons of ultimate charge meaning he's going to be able to keep spamming his ultimate ability over and over again and that's going to juice him up and it's going to help him juice up the rest of the team and especially when he gets a bonus turn when he has full ultimate charge he's again just applying as many damage over times on the enemy as possible so lord vader's ultimate lord vader's unique ability and him constantly supercharging the team's mastery was huge and pivotal and this, this gets me really excited for how he's going to work inside the challenge rank i think darth vader is still going to be the lead to go land those damage over time and then uh lord vader's just going to keep charging the mastery applying those damage over time so i think that's going to get pretty interesting so lord vader's actually a pretty good i'm not gonna say plug and play character but a good plug and outside the leader slot unlike other galactic legends like mass lucas sith eternal it's really hard for them to charge their ultimate outside the leadership ability lord vader master Kenobi, they do great charging ultimates outside of the leadership ability. i mean look boom 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 smashing those ultimates over and over again let's talk about the rest of the members that we have here and would i keep them for a subsequent run we threw piet in there i think piet i could probably skip out in here he died off pretty early inside of phase two i would have rather opted for a character with tenacity down on a basic for example maybe darth malik or something like that because lord vader can get those unresistible damage over times out right but darth vader's aoe force crush it's hard to land those damage over time and that's a lot of damage over times missing you'll see plenty of times using force crush and we're simply not landing the dots 
on the enemy. I would have rather had a tenacity down type of character. So not just Lord Vader getting the debuffs out there, but also Darth Vader. So there's a lot of uh, uh, tenacity. You can maybe do Krennic. TIE Fighter Pilot. Malik sounds like an obvious choice as well, especially because of his durability. So some options out there instead of Piet, but Piet we mainly had in there to mark down Lord Vader as an extra tank and grant some offense up. Otherwise, I don't know if Piet was really that important for this lineup here. However, I am a fan of using Grand Admiral Thrawn as well as Darth Treya. Darth Treya is also a little bit iffy, but the reason why we brought Darth Trey in, because the strategy again is just get Lord Vader as many turns as possible. So he's passively and actively applying the damage over time, so getting to mastery uh, a lot quicker, getting to alter charge a lot quicker, but also Trey is reducing the cooldowns on Lord Vader so he can keep spamming unshackled emotions. Thrawn passing over turns. If I, I, I kind of messed around Thrawn a little bit afterwards hindsight 2020 just keep passing those turns over the lord so we can constantly keep taking turns and apply as much damage over time onto the enemy other than that that is really the main core of the strategy and once those damage over times start stacking up it's just a matter of time for things to kind of start rolling the phase one's the only phase you got to kind of work a little bit you got to work get those stacks of underestimated up to 60 got to work to get those damage over times going and then literally it's like a snowball rolling down a hill you aren't going to really have any other complications getting through this sith raid just got to make sure if in the phase one when nihilus is about to use his annihilate make sure someone uses the unbreakable will the ability so he doesn't get killed off and soak up the annihilate either use it on lord vader or darth vader preferably so that way they can easily heal up because Darth Vader is able to heal up with those damage over time. So he'll get back up to 100% health very easy and Thrawn can try to get him his protection back. All that fun stuff. And Lord Vader also can heal himself up quite a lot with this first special ability. So that's the way to go in that phase one. And after that, phases two, three, and four, I... Yeah, you probably could have done things a little bit more scientific, but it was just so incredibly easy. And we're getting into phase four here and we only have three members here. And look at them. They're able to pull off a massive victory up against the Sith trio here. I do want to talk about one more thing. Darth Vader. This is the first time since the great nerf of 2021 that I felt like, oh man, this is the Darth Vader I kind of remembered that we had for a year after his original rework back in 2020. Yes, he got nerfed quite a lot against Galactic Legends, but do keep in mind, they did increase his viability against raid bosses but we weren't really able to see the potential until now. The main thing I want to remind you guys is that he's going to deal 50% more damage for each effect is spelled cool, but it's increased to 100% against raid bosses. And that's why we're seeing some pretty bonkers damage. There was a clip one time, Lord Vader takes Treyarch from like 60% to uh, like 20% or lower, which is a single coin blade. He's doing some pretty heavy lifting damage up against the Sith Trimer because they are considered a raid boss. So I think, I'm gonna say this right now. I've seen, uh, I've done the Supreme Leader Kylo solo. I've seen the Jedi Master Kenobi uh, Sith Raid solos. This by far is going to be the easiest. And I'm looking forward to see how people can take this concept and make it even better. Although Sith Raid's not really gonna be that much more important anymore, especially since we're gonna sit it. And I'm gonna make an assumption. If you're someone that has Lord Vader, you got the four relicates and all that fun stuff. Chances are your guild is already having Sith Raid on lockdown, and it's only a matter of time for you guys to submit. Maybe that's not the case. You want a good Galactic Legends for the Sith Raid. This guy, I think I like a lot more than Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, but Supreme Leader Kylo Ren is still a fine Galactic Legends for the Sith Raid, but there's just a little bit more strategy involved in this, whereas this is a lot more passive. You don't kind of really think all that much with Lord Vader. So we'll have to wait and see how this is going to translate into the Challenge Rank Raid, which is a lot more important right now, but I think the concept is the same. Give Lord Vader as many turns as possible. Try to reduce his cooldowns as much as possible. And let Darth Vader's inspiring through fear lead. Keep those damage over times in place. And as the course of the battle goes on, the more damage over times there are, the more calling blades are going to be thrown out there. And some might make the argument, maybe use Trey's cooldown reduction on Lord on Darth Vader so he could do more merciless massacres and therefore get to many, many more calling blades as well. One more note I think I would change with my Lord Vader. Lord Vader here was more of a passive support. He wasn't really playing an attacker, although he was doing good damage, especially when he got the Ashes of the Republic. He was able to do a lot more damage in his basic and all of his other abilities, which is cool and all. I would have remodded differently. Gary should have showed the mods earlier on in this video here, but I would have just done maybe more of a speed set on my, Dar on my Lord Vader instead of the offense set that I'm currently 
running here right now because if uh, Lord Vader's faster, he gets more turns, which means more passive or, uh, the damage over time being applied, which therefore means as well on top of that, more unshackled emotions and more mastery, more of this and that. So that's the one thing I would change because right now for that raid, we had 500 speed. I would have thrown a speed set on him to make it even faster if you want to optimize this raid team. But even as I said, I went into this blindly. First time with Darth Vader Elite, it just worked without moving mods around. And that's the most important thing at the end of the day. So that's going to wrap it up right there, ladies and gentlemen. He's a weird galactic legend. Haven't really found love for him in the PvP, Grand Arena, Squad Arena sense. Maul, I'm sure, will change it. But right now, I think this is the coolest thing, is that he seems to have a lot of raid potential. However, Sith Raid, uh, you tell me, might not be as important nowadays in 2021. But stay tuned. We're going to try this out in the Challenge Rancor Raid sometime this upcoming week. But as you guys know, like, comment down below, and subscribe. And the most important thing is always remember, it's great to be in the Empire today.